All right, if you joined me last time, then we set up, un well, we learned about the verse um, for Unreal Editor for Fortnite. We learned about the code verse. It's a programming language called verse. And we went over the basics. And in this episode, what I wanted to do is show you guys how to kind of like jump in and kind of use the stuff that we learned. So what you need to do is go to your Epic Launcher and launch Unreal Editor for Fortnite. And if you don't have that, you need to download it. And it takes a little bit to download. So you have to have Fortnite and you have to have Unreal Editor for Fortnite. So once you have that, you need to launch it. And when you launch it, it's going to bring you to this screen. Or really, there's a screen before that. And it's going to say, just get started. But when you get started, you're going to get on this screen. This screen. And you can get started here, go through the documents, or go to the community tab. But for this, if you're going to follow along with me, I'm just going to go off of what it was telling me on the website. I'm going to even reference it back and forth. So anyways, what it says is go to feature examples right here. And then we're going to go to verse devices starter. And then you name your project, whatever you want to name it down here. I'm just going to name it, um, I don't know, my verse project you can name it whatever but remember you can't have any spaces or anything like that so cool this is all good this is all good no team because we're doing this by ourselves um you can create a team and this will allow you to collaborate with other people that's the really cool thing about this but once you have this done you just simply press create and you're gonna have to wait a while while it creates <clears throat> okay so when it creates you're gonna have a blank project screen and on your project screen, it's going to remind you a lot of Unreal Engine. Now, if you want to get a real quick tutorial of, of this screen, uh, a creator named Ryan Langley, he made a really good tutorial already about this. So um, I'll just go over this little blank project here. So we got a blank project. <clears throat> if you know Unreal Engine, you know that these are player starts. Um, they got two player stars. They got some lighting material in here. Here's the outliner, just like Unreal Engine. Here's the details panel, just like Unreal Engine. All of this looks the exact same. This looks about the same here. All of this works the exact same. Project size, though. This will tell you how big your project is, so you can keep track of how big your, the, the project you're making. <clears throat> now, a couple things have changed from Unreal Engine uh, 5. And you'll notice that there's kind of not as many options as there was. So you still got landscaping, you still got modeling and animation. That's cool. Project. This is something new. Um, and it's just called something new because project is pretty much in Unreal Engine 5. You can open a project, go to your project settings. Um, you can see your project size, which you can see from here. <clears throat> What else can you do here? So this is the place panels. This is just the same thing. Place actors panel, same thing as Unreal Engine. If you pull that up, it'll allow you to put actors into your scene. You can put basic actors, lights, cameras, um, shapes. You can do post-processing effects, which are like special effects, like, you know, glitter and sparkles and all that stuff. Block and volumes. So, so these are volumes for when you don't want people to, you know, block, uh, you don't want people to walk through certain areas. You can do block and volumes and all this other stuff. <clears throat> what else do they have here? So another thing that I noticed was Fab, Fab Alpha. This is something new. If you click on Fab Alpha, what you're gonna do is pretty much is like a, it's kinda like the Unreal Engine Marketplace mixed with Quixel Mega Scans, basically. So you've got packs that you can download to put in your game, um, just like the Unreal Engine Marketplace. But you can also do individual items and put them in your game like this. If I wanted this in my game, I just click it, drag it, drop it. Now it's going to load into my scene. And there it goes right there. So that's cool. Um, so that's what the Fab is. The Fab Alpha, this is really, really, really cool. You should look through this and... You know, grab as much as you can get, especially all the free stuff. Um, <clears throat> verse. So, this button right here. Open the current project in Visual Studio Code. Now, in order to write verse code, 
you need Visual Studio Code. So if you click this button here, it will open the project in your Visual Studio Code if you already have it. And if you don't have it, don't worry, because it will actually um, it will actually go ahead and download it for you. It will prompt you to download it. So this is how you open up the code in your Visual Studio Code. Okay. So <clears throat> that's what we'll do here. And we'll we'll do this later, but I just wanted to show you that that'll link straight to your Visual Studio. Boom. Launch session. This will open up a session, this session right here in the Fortnite editor. So basically you'll be able to play this and test it out. Um but I don't want to do that right now. I just want to go over all the buttons. What else do we have here? So this is the viewport options. And it'll show you your FPS, meaning your frames per second. So that way you can keep your game optimized. Um, same in, in Unreal. There's different modes you can go into, like immersive mode. Ooh, nice. Or you can go into the game view mode, which is also pretty cool. Um, okay. Game view mode just pretty much takes away all the little widgets that are on the ground there. Like watch. I click it back on, you're going to see the player start and all the little widgets come up. Okay, you can switch your viewport. Let's see, perspective, this is to change your perspective. Now, perspective is the, the if you're making a 3D game, perspective is what you want. If you're making a 2D game, which I don't know if this really supports that or not yet, I have to, I have to play with it. I'm sure it can, though. It looks like it can. Um, you would do it like this, it's from the right or from the left or whatever. But perspective will give you the good view. Lit, this is allows you to control your lighting, but not the lighting in your scene, just how you're looking at it. So you can see the scene unlit. Uh, you can see it in wireframe mode, you know. You can do all kinds of things here. But lit just shows you the regular colors. Show. <clears throat> this will show you a whole bunch of things that you can use. Um, the collisions are not turned on, but if we turn them on, we'll be able to see the collisions on the ground and on all of our objects, like... Look at that. Um, but I don't want it to show collisions. I mean, I'm good with that. You can get it to show whatever you want. Have those things checked. Time of day. Now, this is cool because in Unreal, you have to do a couple of things to control the time of day. Here, all you have to do is control the time of day. You know what I'm saying? Very, very simple. Uh, scalability. If you don't know what this is, this will allow you to control the settings for what you're looking at in your editor. So if you have a really strong computer, you could turn everything up to cinematic. You know what I'm saying? If you want to fry your computer all the way up, yeah, turn it all the way to cinematic. Um, Epic is good. Like for me, I'm good with far. I don't, I don't have to go past far and high, but Epic is pretty cool though. My computer, I know it can handle Epic. And as you see, or you may not see, but if you turn it on Epic, like everything gets a little bit more crisp. And nice. <clears throat> Where are we at? So scalability. Um, okay. Let's talk about these buttons here. So okay, this button will allow you to click on things. So I want that. Oh no, I want the floor. No, oh, no, I want this floor. So you can click on it. This button will allow you to move whatever you have clicked on. So if I want to move this statue, uh, click this, and then now I can move it in the Y direction. I can move it in the red X direction or blue Z direction. Boop. Okay, this will allow you to rotate. So you can rotate it in the blue, rotate it in the red, the X, and you can rotate it in the Y, the green. Okay, and this last one will allow you to scale this object. So if I wanted this to be bigger, I can make it bigger in either direction. Or if I put my mouse on the middle part of it, I can make it bigger in all the directions and make it massive. Now, okay, cool. So now we got the concept of those buttons down. Uh, uh, control how objects snap to the surfaces. Now that's pretty cool. That I don't think that surface snapping, you could turn that on. So that means if you want your objects to snap straight to the ground, then they can. 
straight to the surface. But okay, this button will allow you to move it off of a grid, so you can move it just inches. Or if you put this grid on, it's going to move by four spaces. Um, you can control that here. So if like if I turn it up, you'll be able to see the effect. So 128. See how it's clicking, click, click. Let me turn it up higher. Turn it to a thousand. So if I move it, see it's going to move over a big chunk, right? And if you don't want that grid on, you can just turn the grid off, and now you can move it inches. All right, same thing with the um, <clears throat> rotation. You could turn that off and rotate it however you like. And same with the scale. That's what the, these are. The camera speed. Okay, see how I'm scrolling back and scrolling in? That, driving back and driving in, this is just my camera speed. I'm, I'm holding my left click and I'm just moving my mouse. That's all I'm doing. But my camera speed is kind of low. So we need to actually set the camera speed up because when I'm doing projects, I always set mine to five or above. And let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so now it's a little bit faster. Okay, you can set it up to as high as you want it to be. Next button here is the maximize the viewport or you don't have to. Um, and in this case, if you lose it just like I did, you can just drag it over here and just maximize it again. So that way you can have different viewports. Maybe you want to see the wireframe, and maybe you also want to see the the unlit mode. And these are all good for when you get deep into the game. Um, is there anything else? Okay, yeah. When you click on this statue, you notice that, for one, in your outliner right here at the top, it shows every single thing that's in your scene. And for me, the thing that I clicked on is the Japanese Komain. So when I clicked on that, it gave me some details down here that I could play with. And he, all of these things I could change. And if you know Unreal Engine already, then you know how to change these things. But you know, let's assume that you don't know. I don't know. Let's assume that you don't know it. <clears throat> well, these will allow me to control different settings about this thing. So I can look at all of them. So the transformation, I can control the transformation, which we just did from the outside, which was these buttons right here. Um, static mesh, though. If you double click on that, okay, usually in Unreal Engine, you'll be able to edit it. So here, you cannot edit your static meshes, but you can add your own, and that's, that's it's not a problem. What about the material? In Unreal Engine, you can click on the material. Here, you cannot edit your material. The material is already cooked into the asset, and you cannot edit it. But you can change the material to whatever you want. So let's say we want him to be this. <laughs> And then if you want to just go back, you can click that. All right. Um, auto nav mesh. That. All right. So what that is, is if this was allowed to move, like say this was going to be chasing me around the, the map, then I want to use auto nav mesh so it can move. Enable gravity is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, if I have it here and that's checked, well... When we play the game, it's going to drop down from the sky. You know what I'm saying? It may even fall over. Collision. Now, these collision... Hold on, let me show you. Let me drag this out a little bit. Collision, uh, overlap hits, overlap events, and general uh, generate hit events. This is when you're writing your code and you want something to happen. So if your player overlaps this thing, then you can generate overlap events, and then you can write those in the code. Uh, collision presets, plenty of collision presets, but for here, I, I would leave it as Fort Static Mesh. We're going to probably go through a lot of these. This is going to be fun. But for this one, we'll leave it here. Again, you can have it to cast a shadow or not. Just click it. Boop. No shadow, shadow. No shadow, shadow. Um, and also, you can make it invisible by clicking visible. Now, if you want it to be visible in your viewport when you're editing, you can keep it visible. But if you want it to be invisible in the game, then you can say actor hidden in game. And you see it's still visible here, but when I play, play the game, you will not be able to see this. What else do we have here? Um, the HLOD, which is level of details. Um, so 
you want to cl include the level of detail. That means the further away that you get from it, the less details that you'll be able to see on that static mesh. However, when you get closer, the more details will become apparent. So now you can see the swirls and the everything here. Um, it's spatially loaded. It's going to load into your uh, world where you put it at. It's um, pretty much what pretty much what that is. The rest of them, you don't really need to worry about those. I don't use none of those, but that's what it is. Cool. So we just went over the whole viewport here. Um, you can save your current level here, which I should do that. And then that's pretty much what I wanted to show you guys today. Oops. Let's see if there's anything else that you can do here. Well, mine's saving. So let's let it save. Yeah, like I said, that's what I just wanted to show you today, how to move around in the editor, and then we're going to start writing some verse code now that you got this part done. So I guess I will holler at y'all next time, and the next time we'll get started on writing some actual code with this project. Peace. <laughs>